After all these years, it's time to praise to Sotek again. So, let me see if I have everything that I need for my sacrifices. Obsidian dagger, check. Cool feather cloak, check. Massive pyramid, check. The only thing left is just finding a bunch of virgins to sacrifice to the snake god. But where would I find a bunch of virgins in this DNA? Hmm. Or I could just go back in time to my teenage years. There was a lot of that back then. Hello fellow Hearts of the Blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to another Heavy Contrast tutorial. Heavy Contrast is a series where I try to paint one miniature to the highest standard possible using just contrast paints and highlights. And for this episode I bring you a real treat because I finally I am able to paint once more Lizardman or Seraphon if you prefer the new name. But this has always been one of my two favorite armies and getting new schools feels awesome after such a long time. So guys, let's get cracking. As you can see, we're starting from a base coat of Corax White Spray. And you can give a light coat of the Corax White Base Paint if you want, I didn't. And for the first layer, I'm going to use a 3 to 1 mix of Ethermatic Blue and Achillean Green. As always with contrast paints, I'm going to go section by section. And I'm only going to care about the smoothness and not about being neat. I want to take I want to get the skin as perfect as possible. And once I done a section, I will go on and absorb any excess where it's pulling what I don't want it to be. To go around for example, places like here. Our base coat of Athermatic Blue and Achillean Green, it's still drying, but it's dry enough that I can do the next step. And this will be base coat all the scales using a mix of one part Leviathan Blue, one part Talazar Blue and one part Medium. I will just go and apply this over all the scales. I ended up doing two coats of the Leviathan and Talazar Blue mix over all of the scales. And now I'm going to show you how you can create mistakes and I'm going to use Power of Blue for this. And Power of Blue is almost a perfect mix. For example, you can see here that I have a bit of a splotch uh, when I did the blue scales. So I'm just going to take Power of Blue and just paint it like this. I went around fixing all the little mistakes using Bahar of Blue and now it's time to start highlighting the skin and for this I'm going to use a one-to-one -one mix of Bahar of Blue and Ulthu and Grey. And what I will do is just a volumetric highlight on the muscles, just like that. I'm just going to pick the top side of each muscle You can see what consistency I use in here. So quite thin. It looks much uh, brighter once you, while it's fresh, but once it dries, you it will tone down quite a bit, uh, giving us a very natural transition. With that first highlight done, I'm going to move into the second and last highlight, and this will be Ulthu and Grey. So I'm just going to thin my Ulthu and Grey to this sort of consistency, just so it flows nicely out of the brush. And I'm just going to do a final highlight. So basically the same highlight I did with, with the mix of Baharoth and Ulthuan, but just making the thinnest lines I can and concentrating it towards the point where the light would shine the most. Thank you. 
And with that highlight done, I'm going to move into highlighting all these scales, and for this I'm going to start with love and blue. And it's just a matter of picking up the striations of each scale and the edges. Go slowly here, you want to make the thinnest line you can. And for the final highlight on these scales, I'm going to use Blue Horror. And I will just basically do very small dots of Blue Horror. Just in the tips of these scales. And on the corners. And with that last step done, our scales are finished. And keen observers among you will have noticed that I haven't painted his crest yet. And that is for one very good reason. I'm going to paint it red. Of course, you can paint your crest any color you want, as long as it's red. Because red is the color of Sotek. And Sotek is the best. And I can already hear you say, but Juan, GW has painted theirs blue in their box art. What well, they are wrong. So I have cleaned my crest using Corax White, then I'm going to do a layer of Flesterous Red over it. Be very careful with this, we don't want to mess all the nice blue highlighted flesh. Our layer of Flesterous Red is now dry enough and I'm going to highlight it. And for this I'm going to start with Evilson Scarlet. And what I will basically do is pick up all the raised bits on his crest, the raised undulations. So we have a very nice and intense red there. With that highlight done, I'm going to move into Wild Rider Red. This will be basically a very thin edge highlight and just picking up the raised surfaces. And for next highlight, I'm going to move into Fire Dragon Bright. And I'm going to do the same edge highlight I did with Wild Rider Red but I'm going to take a bit less space, constructing it more towards the back of the crest. And now for the final highlight, I'm going to take Luganath Orange and just going to do a dot of this here at the very end. With that last step done, our mini is looking absolutely stunning. That red crest really makes a lot for the overall color scheme. Praise be so tech, may he touch us all with his split tongue. Of course, you can always paint it in any other color that you like, if you are a heretic. Off camera, I cleaned the rest of the details using Corax White, and now I'm going to start applying all the contrast layers. For the leather, I'm going to use Cycle Brown diluted with contrast medium. This is two parts Cycle Brown and one part contrast medium. While the cycle brown is drying, I'm going to base coat these two very small details using a snake bag leather. This is a very particular detail to this mini, but you can use a snake bag leather for other leather details to add some variety on your minis. With that layer done, I'm now going to paint all the claws and any bone details. In this case, there isn't any bone details in it, but if you have, this is the color that I would use. This is a mix of one part wild wood and four parts contrast medium.
I'm not going to base coat his eyes and all the feathers using the Yanden yellow. On the feathers I just want a very uniform layer of the Yanden yellow. I don't want any pulling on the bottom or on the top of the feather. And on the eyes I will try to make the Yanden yellow pull more on the back. Our layer of Yanden yellow over all the feathers is now dry and I'm going to add the two gradients, the orange and the green, orange on the top, green on the bottom, that are present on the box shop. And for this I'm going to start with the orange, this will be, I will be using Griff Hound Orange. And what I will do is apply this, clean my brush in my pot of water, get rid of any excess and then feather it out. Just like that. Super easy and you get an instant and beautiful gradient with no effort. Now I'm going to do the same using the green. This is orc flesh, clean the brush and feather out. Just like that. You may want to do this one more time to add more color saturation on top and on the bottom, but this is optional. I will just do that on all the feathers. And with that step done, I'm going to paint the last part that is not metallic, that is the jade edge of his weapon. And for this I'm going to use a 2 to 1 mix of a Killian green and orc flesh. Once this first layer dries, I will do a second one and maybe a third one, I want a really dark color. You can also use Pterodon turquoise, it will be very very similar. I just want to make the video using the less number of colors possible. And with all those contrast layers out of the way, it's now time to start highlighting all the details on the miniature and I'm going to start with the feathers because I really liked how they turned out. So for the first highlight I'm going to use Phalanx Yellow and I will just do a very thin edge highlight of Phalanx Yellow all across the mini. Yellow is a very transparent color so when you run it over the orange it's going to turn into a lighter orange and when you run it over the green it's going to turn into a very light green, basically transforming itself into different colors in each section and that is very useful. And for the final highlight, on the feathers I'm going to take Dawn Yellow and I'm going to do a very small highlight. So picking up the very tip. some dots here in the corners where there is like a cut in the feather with the feathers finished i'm going to move into the leather and for the first highlight i'm going to use gorthor brown just going to do the very smallest edge highlight i can on the leather And on top of that you can add a bit of weathering if you want. Just some random scratches. With that highlight done I'm going to move into Bane Blade Brown. And I'm just going to do the same edge highlight but I'm going to make it more concentrated towards the lightest parts. So any corner where there is a cut in the leather. and any prominent area. You can also add random dots of this where the weathering lines meet the edge. And for the final highlight on the leather I'm going to use Palette Witch Flesh and I will just do very very small dots of Palette Witch Flesh just in the very corners. Also with palette which flesh I'm going to do a couple more highlights and this will be the claws and also these lighter brown details here. 
With the leather not on, I'm going to just finish his eyes very quickly. For this, I'm going to just take black and do a line on his eye vertically. Just like that. And now I'm going to take pure white and I'm going to do a very small dot on the top side of that line. Just like that. With that detail painted, there's only one detail left to paint before we move into painting all the gold, and that is the jade on his weapon. And I'm starting to donate highlight on the plate using silverite green. For the second highlight on the J8 weapon, I'm going to use Gauss Blaster Green. I'm basically doing the same edge highlight, but I'm going to take less area with this pass, concentrating it towards the tips. And for the final highlight, I'm going to take pure white and I'm going to do very small dots just on the corners. And with that last highlight done, it's now time to move into all the gold details, which are basically everything that is not painted. And for the base coat, I'm going to use Canoptic Alloy. And with all the gold details now base coated, I'm going to apply a layer of one part Girl Grand Affair and one part Contrast Medium all over. This will both shade it and give it its final color. Our layer of gold grand affair is not drawing, I'm going to highlight this, and for this I'm just going to use Stormhole Silver and do a very simple edge highlight. So I'm just going to pick up the edges of all the gold details. And with that last step done, and the base painted, including some cool water effects, just for fun. Our skink is finished, and I really hope you had the same fun as I did painting this guy, because after painting a full army, I really missed painting more skinks. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Do you like my videos and want to help me make them? Well, there are several ways you can do that. You can follow me on social media. You have the links to all my social media in the description below. You can also check all my affiliate links in the pinned comment of this video. Use those links in your next hobby purchase and help me without any additional cost to you. I finally have a link for the brushes that I use down there. Don't forget to check the merch that you can see just below this video or in the shop tab of my channel. But most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. You have the link to my Patreon in the description below and in the pinned comment of the video. Or if you prefer, you can just click the join button button below this video. Patreon channel members help me do all the cool projects that I want to make and help me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid, no content will ever be hidden behind a paywall, but it's a nice way to help me. You will get something back for university. As it, guys, thank you very much for watching and a special thank you to Heather Amster, Lauren Sigismund, Nicolas Fornell, Terrinosaur, Christoph Moret, Javi Mota, Kim Anderson, Michael Boye, Tebe Mietzus, Beldrain, Victor Tomena, Equitas, Aaron Del, Carlos Rivera, Charles Armintash, Chris Fiby, Kieran Murthail, Darcy Farrar, Dr. V, Gareth Smith, G4, Jamie Milligan, Josh Simpson, Jetty Butler, Kevin Mian, Kevin Sula, Jonathan Lindemann, Mark Jarvis, Matthew Miller, Natius Maximus, Samuel, Sasha Park, Supernef, Thomas Ustergaard, and Bill Caswar for being the coolest persons in the planet. Be like these fine folks on my Patreon and take control.